Hi, in this video, we will go over how to calculate electric field by integrating over a charge distribution. So this question is from your homework. And this question is on your homework for two reasons. It both illustrates how to calculate electric field by integrating over charge distribution. And this also is an example of a situation with not enough symmetry not enough symmetry to use Gauss's law to calculate the electric field. So let's get started. We are being asked to calculate the electric field at the location of point P. Our starting point is really Coulomb's law, which says that the electric field due to a point charge is equal to the Coulomb's constant times the charge divided by the distance squared. Well, this is the electric field version of Coulomb's law. So as you look at this question, trying to apply Coulomb's law, I hope you see the first dilemma. What do we use for distance? And this is really the prompt for coming to the conclusion that we have to integrate. Because if you are looking at the entire rod, this is a question without an answer. There is no one distance you can use. You could uh, try to use the distance at the center and hope you get lucky. And I will tell you, in this geometry, you don't. So as a physicist, when we are faced with a problem like this, we have a go-to tool. This is our brute force tool. What we do is we break up the setup to the point where we can apply this equation that is meant for a point charge. So this is what we are going to do. We are going to take this entire charge distribution and imagine breaking it up into tiny little pieces. In fact, into infinitesimal pieces. So let's take a representative piece here, which is going to have some small amount of charge, dq. It'll have the thickness of dx. And we need something to parameterize it with it'll be a distance x from the left hand of the rod. So this is what we can say for this representative infinitesimal piece of the rod. We can apply Coulomb's law. It's cut into such a small piece that this dx is negligibly small. And we can say this, the contribution to the electric field at point P due to this small amount of charge dq is given by Coulomb's law, Coulomb's constant times dq over the distance squared. And you have all taken calculus before. This is now what we are going to say. This is the meaning of the integral. We are going to say when we add up all the contributions from pieces like dq from x equals zero to x equals L, that's going to give us the net electric field. Let me write that down. The net electric field at point P is given by the integral of the infinitesimal contributions over the entire rod. And when you look at this expression here, we have a couple quantities that are only a schematic representation. That's the dq and this distance. And we should rewrite these schematic representations in terms of these parameters that we picked. D, the distance is the easier one, so let me do that first. Just looking over the geometry, it looks like the distance is L minus x plus a. You can spot check it to be sure that when x equals 0, distance is L plus A. And when x is equal to L, distance is A. And the infinitesimal amount of charge, dq, that's the harder one. But I can read in the question where it says charge per unit length is lambda. So if I have some length, then the amount of charge, it makes intuitive sense to me, should be the charge per length times the length. And if we want to express this in terms of the total charge on the rod, 
it'll be the total charge divided by length times dx. All right, let me use lambda since that makes my expression simpler. Okay, now this is an expression you can explicitly integrate from x equals 0 to x equals L. All right, let's do the integral. Staring at it for a bit, it looks like the best way to do the integral is by u substitution. So let me use this algebraic substitution of u is equal to l minus x plus a and du is equal to differentiating this minus dx. And I like to change the limits as I do the substitution. It cuts down on a lot of possible mistakes. So let me plug in x equals 0. That gives me L plus A as the quote-unquote lower limit and plug in X equals L that gives me U equals A as quote-unquote upper limit. The minus signs, are, they're all gonna work out. All right, I got constant factors and the rest are just a polynomial integral. I think I know how to do that. So let me go ahead and do it. Factoring out the constants. And the antiderivative of 1 over u squared is minus 1 over u. You can double check it by taking the derivative of this expression. You should get plus 1 over u squared. Evaluate this from u equals l plus a to a. So plug in the upper limit, subtract to the one with the lower limit, and this is what we get. Let's work out all those double negatives. Then I have ke lambda times 1 over a minus 1 over l plus a. And it doesn't really simplify much beyond here. So this is the answer. You can do a quick sanity check by making sure that this quantity here is positive. We are expecting a positive quantity. It ought to be positive. And it is. It's 1 over smaller number minus 1 over bigger number that should be positive. So that's the answer. The electric field at point P due to the rod is equal to Coulomb's constant times lambda times 1 over A minus 1 over length of the rod plus. Now, this is not worth memorizing as a formula you are not going to encounter this often enough for it to justify this being in your memory. But what you should understand, and maybe even memorize until you understand, is how to go through this process of taking a charge distribution, breaking it up into tiny little pieces where you can apply Coulomb's law and setting up the integral and actually carrying out the integral. For this lower division class, if you can do this for one-dimensional cases, you are in good shape. There's uh, one more example I want you to see, so until then, bye.